Section 38 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Brian Keenan. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1, Section 38. Wednesday, 24. I have peace and power and love to God. This was appointed for a rest day, but one of my old friends gave out for preaching. While I have my health, and God is with me, I shall never say it is enough. There is a prospect of a good work in Nansemund, Virginia. Near one hundred people joined in the neighborhood. Rode to Phillips's six miles, and preached to about one hundred people. After preaching, rode on to the Widow Lane's twenty-five miles. Rode over Blackwater, through Southampton, and with hard riding, and some part bad roads, reached there about nine o'clock, where I slept in peace, and arose early. Oh, for faith to be saved from all sin! At twelve o'clock went to preach, and God was with us of a truth, while I spoke upon First Peter 1, 7 through 12. Afterward met the society, and gave the people liberty to speak. Many of them spoke, and there were great meltings among them. One woman testified sanctification. I was blessed and felt more spiritual. I can speak with a full heart till tears flow. The people are more moved by my easy speaking than ever before. Blessed be the Lord. Sunday, 28. Yesterday I rode to William Graves's, spoke on Hebrews 4, 13 through 15, and had some life. There were about thirty people to hear. Met the class, then rode to Robert Jones's, twenty-five miles have peace this morning, but not so tender as I would always wish to be. I read a pamphlet written by Mr. Jarrett in answer to the Baptists in a dialogue, and I think it is well written and ought to be published. I have had my mind tried about approaching troubles, but I ought rather to mind my own business and trust all to God. Spoke at Robert Jones's on Revelations 21, 5 through 8. Some feared the soldiers would come to press our horses, but I had faith to believe they would not, and was let out much in speaking. Some wild young men kept talking, till I came to that part fitted for them, then they listened. I met the class, they were stirred up, thirsting for full sanctification. I felt a tenderness for Brother Hartley's sister, who wept for his absence. Bless the Lord, who gives me to weep with them that weep. But, oh, what must my dear parents feel for my absence? Ah, surely nothing in this world should keep me from them but the care of souls, and nothing else could excuse me before God. I read my select scriptures, the Law, the Sermon on the Mount, and the Revelation, and prayed often. God was with me. Preached at Maybury's, they have built a new house. There was a woman sat by the desk and cried, Glory and praise! I drink of the water of life freely. I am at the fountain. My flesh praises God. I never heard such singing in my life. I spoke with great power, from Thessalonians 1, 6-9, and then met society. This day has been a high day. Was led out to speak to saints and sinners. The people spoke in society. God was with us. Some expressed their joy in the union. I wrote to booths, and am kept in peace and love, and have great consolation in public and private. Monday, 29. Read Mr. Wesley's second volume of sermons. Rode to Wood Tucker's, spoke on Hebrews 12, 1 through 4. Then met society, or rather gave them an exhortation. The people of the world were by, and God was with us. I hope what was spoken was blessed to saint and sinner. I am kept by grace, though I have been in temptation. Tuesday, 30. I arose at five o'clock with peace of mind, and was employed in writing letters to my friends in the peninsula. Then rode to George Smith's, preached on First Peter 4, 17, to about sixty people, spent some time in speaking, but had not as much liberty as at some other times. Spoke to the class, the people spoke afterward of the goodness of God. Afterward I rode to Bushel's, some were gone home for fear of the horse-press. Captain Bushel is dead, 
and the work dies with him. Before I had done prayer there came up soldiers and horses. The people were affrighted, but there was no need. The officers came in and sat down. One soon tired. The other could not stay it out. I spoke from First Peter 5, 10, and addressed myself according to my audience. The people were greatly alarmed. I was tempted to go back to the north, there is such a commotion in the country. The troops are going to Camden, South Carolina. But I must go on, and not faint in the way. I have been very well off, but am following trouble. What matters it where I go? What comes upon me, if God is with me? Or where I live, or where I die, if holy and ready? Wednesday 31 I find some left the society here at the time of the division, and between one thing and another it is bad times here, and a sorrowful day with me. Thursday, June 1, 1780 Rode to Mr. Jarrett's and was kindly entertained. Preached in the barn to about seventy people, but not so lively as when I was here four years ago. Spoke on First John three twenty three, had much free conversation among the people. Mr. Jarrett is as kind as formerly. Friday, too. Went to White Oak, and spoke on Titus 3, 2 through 5, and was blessed. Then met the society, and spoke to the people. Mr. Jarrett wept, and all the people, at the joy of union. Saturday, 3. Rode to Gillam Booth's, had about sixty people, and I spoke on Matthew seven twenty-one through 23. Here Captain Benson came twelve miles to see me. Poor man, I wept over him, and exhorted him to seek the Lord, which, if he does not, I fear he will never come back. But his family are praying for him. I felt an uncommon love for him, and I hope God will bless and keep him alive in the day of battle. 1810. Now General Benson is living in Talbot, Maryland. Sunday 4. I rode twelve miles to Mrs. Merritt's meeting-house. There were about three hundred people, white and black. Spoke on Romans 2, 7 through 9. After sermon I spoke to the society. Some of them are happy souls. But there is a slackness in meeting. The rules of the society have not been kept up here. I spoke to some select friends about slave-keeping, but they could not bear it. This I know. God will plead the cause of the oppressed, though it gives offense to say so here. O Lord, banish the infernal spirit of slavery from thy dear Zion. Monday 5 I have peace, though I am grieved at some things. It will be long, I fear, before the good Virginia brethren will be brought into close discipline though there are many gracious people. Tuesday 6. Have peace of mind. Preached at Walker's Barn on Hebrews 3, 2. Met some faithful people in society. Have been reading Knox's first volume of sermons. They are sublime, though not deep. I approve the spirit and principles of the man. He appears to be of the spirit of Mr. McGaw. He gives some favorable hints of restoration that natural evil should purge out moral evil, but gave it not as his own opinion, but as that of others. In another place he says, Perhaps the heathen world shall have an after-trial, if in time it is true. So it sometimes is, that if a man is a rigid Calvinist, and turns, he must go quite round. But general redemption and conditional salvation is the plan. I keep up prayer in public or private twelve times a day, and am exercised not a little. Lord, keep me through the approaching troubles of the continent. I preached at Benjamin Johnson's, had many to hear, and some of the rich. Went as near the conscience as I could get. Spoke on Luke thirteen twenty-three through 25 then met society, and had a melting time. The people spoke their experiences, and joyed in the union, and to see my face. Wednesday 7. Rode to Rose Creek. Here my old friend William White would not come to hear me. Spoke on Romans 13, 11 through 13. Was much assisted. All the friends were moved. But sinners are callous. God was with us. 
Thus the Lord made us to rejoice. And although there has been a falling off, I hope God will revive the people and his work in this place. Rode home with friend Rivers, and think I am more given up than ever I was in my life. I see the need of living near to God, to be able to preach the travails of God's people, to get freedom and love to bear with sinners, and to deal faithfully. I am laboring for God, and my soul is pressing after full salvation. Thursday 8. In my way I called to see friend Marks and family. He is worn down with family troubles. Also called to see Mrs. Claiborne at B. Courthouse. She is under some despondency from weakness of body. Spoke at Mark Crowder's on 1 Peter 1, 5 through 5-10. The word was blessed to believers. In society some spoke of the goodness of God. In the afternoon I rode through a steep, dangerous place into the river. But, though it was frightful, I came safe over to Wharton's. Edward Dromgoole is a good preacher, but entangled with a family. We spoke for a plan for building houses in every circuit for preachers' wives, and the society to supply their families with bread and meat so the preachers should travel from place to place, as when single. For unless something of the kind be done, we shall have no preachers but young ones in a few years. They will marry and stop. Friday 9. Preached at Woolsey's Barn on Jude 20-22. through 22. James Morris exhorted, and the people were moved very much. I rode to friend Owens, had the comfort to see my Portsmouth friends, and was pleased to find their faces Zionward. Saturday, 10. Preached to about sixty people, was blessed in speaking. Rode on to my old friend Samuel Jorgens, as kind as ever, but a dissenter in heart. I spoke at the chapel with great power on Isaiah 3, 10, 11. Here I was taken sick, a smart fever, I could get no farther. Was very bad on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Providence dark, my spirits much dejected. Wednesday 14. Cannot read, write, think, pray, or speak much. I have such pain. But I trust in the Lord. It is no matter where I die, if in the Lord. I commend all to Him. The more I suffer, the better it will be in the end, if it is for souls I labor and suffer. Thursday 15. I am better in health, but have the toothache violently, and am forced to use tobacco that I had laid aside. But putting this in my tooth I found some relief. Lord, give me patience. I am never so holy as when traveling and preaching. I hope to set out again tomorrow. Lord, give me patience under all my suffering, and a happy issue out of all, in thine own time. Have read as far as Isaiah in going through my Bible have but little time. I see the need of returning to my twelve times of prayer. I have been hindered and interrupted by pains and fevers. Pain is trying, but I am kept from murmuring hitherto. Satan has tried me, and I have had some dejection of spirit. Lord, keep me every moment. Friday 16. I crossed Roanoke, North Carolina, felt a little better, though weak. We rode near thirty miles, was like to faint in the carriage. But at Brother Edwards felt refreshed, and eased from pain. Slept well, blessed be God. Saturday 17. I am in peace, and much blessed always when traveling. Preached at Jones's barn to about one hundred people. Spoke on Hebrews 4, 11 through 15. Was weak, but spoke long. A few felt and understood. The unawakened appeared unmoved. My discourse was not for them. I think my immediate call is to the people of God. Others seem in a hardened state. They have heard much, obeyed little. Went to Mrs. Yaney's, an afflicted, distressed woman, sunk into rigid mortification, thinking she ought to fast excessively. Sunday 18 I rode fifteen miles to Brother Bustian's and preached to about five hundred people. Was much let out on Isaiah 55, 6, 7. The people were solemnly attentive. I was tempted to think I had done well, 
but I opposed the devil and overcame him. Brother Dickens spoke on charity very sensibly, but his voice is gone. He reasons too much, is a man of great piety, great skill in learning, drinks in Greek and Latin swiftly, yet prays much, and walks close with God. He is a gloomy countryman of mine, and very diffident of himself. My health is recovered, thank the Lord. Thus he makes my strength sufficient for my day. Glory to God. Monday, 19. Rose about five o'clock, was a little disturbed in my rest with company. Brother Dickens drew the subscription for a Kingswood school in America. This was what came out a college in the subscription printed by Dr. Coke. Gabriel Long and Brother Bustian were the first subscribers, which I hope will be for the glory of God and good of thousands. We set off in the rain, rode over Fishing Creek to Davis's ten miles. I spoke on 1 Thessalonians 1, 8, 9. Had some light, but the people were very little moved. Rode twelve miles to Gabriel Long's through the woods. I hope John Dickens will ever after this be a friend to me and Methodism. My health is greatly restored, and blessed among my friends. Tuesday 20. After an hour spent in prayer, private and in the family, I read a few chapters in the Bible, began reading Watts's first volume of sermons, was pleased and profited, preached at noon to fifty people on Titus 2, 11 through 14, had some liberty among the people. They were very little affected, but the faithful, for whom I principally spoke, were tender. Then rode over to Joseph John Williams's, a rich man of this world, and I hope sincere. I am kept through mercy. Wednesday, 21. I had to ride alone better than twelve miles to Mr. Duke's. When I came there, found about thirty people, and they quite ignorant. After preaching, I took dinner, and in talking found three or four of them tenderly serious gave them advice. The man and his wife have had conviction, and have sinned it away. They say it was the disputes of the Baptists that turned them aside. I then rode home with a Mr. Green, a Presbyterian, and was much blessed in reading Watts's first volume of sermons. Thursday, 22. I rode to Jenkins's and spoke plainly to about eighty people, and found the word was fitted to their cases. Met class, it was a day of peace to me. The Lord was with me at this poor but good man's house. I was kept by the power of God. My soul is breathing after the Lord at all times. There is a hardness over the people here. They have had the gospel preached by Presbyterians, Baptists, and Methodists. The two former appear to be too much in the spirit of the world. There is life amongst some of the Methodists, and they will grow because they preach growing doctrines. I heard of Mr. Hart, from Charleston, passing north, and one of the Countess of Huntington's men turning Baptist. They have soon turned about, but they may follow Mr. Whitefield in Calvinism. Friday, 23. I have peace, the Lord is my portion. This was a day of fasting. I rode fifteen miles, preached, prayed, and sung near two hours, ate a little about four o'clock, and preached at Nutbush Creek Chapel, a little log house about twenty-five feet long and twenty wide, to about one hundred and fifty people. Here I found a broken society. Rode home with Dr. King. His wife was in society. I slept in peace and rose about five o'clock. My heart is with God. Glory be to thee, O Lord. I had too mean an opinion of Carolina. It is a much better country, and the people live much better than I expected from the information given me. Saturday, 24. Though the weather was extremely hot, I, yet weak in body, rode to Colonel Edmund Taylor's, and at the schoolhouse spoke to about seventy people, on 1 Peter 4, 18. Afterward was kindly entertained at Colonel Taylor's. They were for ordinances here, though not heated. Sunday, 25 rode six miles to the tabernacle, about four hundred people, rich and poor, attended, had very little liberty in speaking, the people very insensible. 
I think these people must be awakened by judgments, for it appears the gospel will not do it. I spoke near two hours to little purpose, held a love feast, all the friends were stirred up. Then rode eight miles, lodged over Nutbush Creek at Brother Reeves's. I am kept in peace, but felt much ashamed for my unfaithfulness. Monday, 26. Rose early, my legs are so inflamed I cannot tell what to do. But we must bear all things. I read Watts's first volume of sermons last week, and transcribed a little of it. I preached at Turner's, he has lost the use of his limbs. I advised him to use the cold bath or electricity. Either might help him. I had liberty in the word. The hearers were stirred up. Many came to hear who do not, will not, attend the other preachers. Now the end of this may be good, for if they get their hearts affected, they will come to hear others, and by constant traveling I may do good. I had in both meetings eighty or ninety people. The circuit preachers have but about twenty. The Baptists appear to be very dead. Their own people will not attend only on Sabbath days. The people are taken away, and times are so difficult that they appear to be under a judicial hardness, having heard so much and felt so little. Tuesday, 27. Preached at William Price's, many came to hear. Lord, set home thy word to their hearts. Road to Hawtree, many came to hear. My text was 1 Peter 1, 5 through 13. I had great freedom and held a love feast. The people were affected. There is the most religion here of any place in the circuit, and yet nothing great. I was much refreshed, rode through the woods, a blind path, to a friend's. I am always upon the run, though kept in peace. Was grieved to see the distress of the people, some taken out to war, others expecting it every day. Lord, help thy people. There are many things that are painful to me, but cannot yet be removed, especially slave-keeping and its attendant circumstances. The Lord will certainly hear the cries of the oppressed, naked, starving creatures. O oh, my God, think on this land. Amen. I am in peace, but have hard labor. I hope it will be for good. I expect to meet trouble, but the Lord can keep me in the greatest danger as in apparent safety. Wednesday, 28. Road to Todd's, six miles. I am dejected to see so little religion. I am comforted when I pray much and find deliverances. I am badly situated and cannot go out into the woods, have no place of retirement at some houses. I preached at Todd's to about seventy people, but very insensible. Met class, talked a little, and then gave the people liberty to speak of the goodness of God. I labored in public, and hope some will take it home. Spoke from Luke six forty six. many came to hear. I have read John Claggett against Chubb. He writes well for a layman, but I suspect he would write as much against us whom he deems Arminians. Chubb is quite wrong. Claggett is no way smooth and entertaining, though he has truth and argument on his side. I found here two old English folks, an old man near sixty in society, an old woman eighty-nine years old, Nodder by name, and can walk, read, sing, and pray, who was converted to God about a year ago. Oh, my God, when shall I be established in purity? Thursday, 29 read several chapters in Isaiah. I have thought if I had two horses, and Harry, a colored man, to go with, and drive one, and meet the black people, and to spend about six months in Virginia and the Carolinas, it would be attended with a blessing. I rode to Widow Pegram's, had about sixty people, it being a muster day. But these were happy souls. As soon as we began to sing, the power of God came over us. I spoke from 1 Peter 5, 6 through 8, then rode to Captain Burroughs's. The people in many places are but children in understanding. We have many things to say, but they cannot bear them now. I am much blessed in my own soul. I began to form a plan for myself and all the preachers for next year 
if we live. I am still seeking full and final salvation. I preached at Burroughs's, but fear there is very little religion in this place. I was uncomfortable. The congregation about sixty people, but they were very dead. Their minds and mouths full of the world. I came off to the widow Ellis's, and found the Lord was here. There has been a heavy rain these two nights past. If it continues, it will destroy the full, ripe crops of wheat. Friday 30 Slept in peace last night. Rose with a deep sense of God. Met with Henry Jones, a serious young man, and believe he is called to the work of the ministry. I advised him to go with me. End of section 38 Recording by Brian Keenan